Okay, come on. All right. All right. Hey, guys. in the vlog. What? Okay, bye. Yeah. Okay. Okay, bye. That's what she said. All right. <laughs> hey, guys. We're going to talk about UFC 169. It's a good show. A lot of good fights. We're going to talk about uh, the Mir. Um, what's the name fight? That was a pretty good one. Yeah. Uh, Overeem. Alistair Overeem. He did good. So much, so much steroids in that room, or in that cage. But yeah, they did good. He did good. I, I just, I think it was a combination of he did really good and uh, Frank Muir didn't really, really do good. He kind of had an off night. He had an off night. He, just, he seemed tentative. He seemed like he was tentative. Um, he didn't seem like he was committing to his techniques. Um, but I mean, easier said than done. I'm sure that. Overeem's power, knees, um, and ring gentlemanship. Uh, he did catch him with a nasty knee. Oh yeah, that, that was wobbled him. Yeah, it might have, it might have kept him a little more wobble, wobbled than we know. So basically, Overeem out, outpowered him, but then he called out um, Brock Lesnar, mm -hmm. which wasn't a really good call out. I could see like calling out like Cain Velasquez maybe or. I don't know, Bigfoot or somebody that beat him before, maybe Travis Brown, but why would you call out Brock Lesnar? That was, that was weird, but whatever. Didn't he already beat him? Yeah, he beat him pretty easy, but I wish I could have just, that would have been fun in your career, just beat it, like people that you really beat easy, and you just keep fighting them. <laughs> That's how you call them out. Yeah, you, no, you could just fight the guys that you already beat, and they were easy wins, so you just keep fighting them for your whole career, and you build up like, you know, like a... Your 50 fights, you can just fight those guys. Yeah. That'd be fun. Why do you have to fight guys that are tough? It's not fun. Should, that's kind of rude. Yeah, I don't know why he called out Brock Lesnar. I don't either. But anyway, okay, so after that fight, we'll go right into the... And I don't understand... I love... Uh, I, I think it's mainly because of Uriah Faber and just his his showmanship and his... his, his just his um, popularity. People love... Uh, Uriah Faber, and for good reason. I mean, he's not only a great fighter, he's a great personality. He's an exciting fighter. He's an exciting personality. He has the he has it. You know, I mean, I love it. Everything from his walkout to his fighting and his post fight, everything about him. Attitude all the time. Is positive. Everything. You know. But that that's why that's the only reason I could think why that fight was the main event over someone like Jose Aldo, who is supposedly. I know supposedly he is one of the best fighters pound for pound today, and he's one of the, you know looked up to as a, like a god. And um, I wonder why the Barrow, who was the champions, was the main event over that Jose Aldo one. I don't know. That's a weird one. Uh, but anyway, going to get talking about Jose Aldo. Great fight, tough guy, Lamos. Right, Lamos. Long, tough, yeah. tough, tough guy, but Jose Aldo just proved why he is uh, Jose Aldo. I don't know. Lama started coming back at the end, though. He finished strong in that fifth round. And he yes. took a lot of leg kicks. I well, imagine he's probably hobbling around today. Yeah, he's definitely hobbling around today. But so that I think Jose Aldo does he ever win the last round? Because even uh, um, uh, Hominick and. Uh, and he started uh, coming back in the last round. He beat, he won the last round. Yeah. And so did uh, he fight. He fought uh, the guy that uh, the um, BJ's gonna fight. I mean, oh, uh, Frankie Edgar. Didn't he? Did he fought. Didn't he win the last round too? Yeah, a lot of people thought Frankie won. Okay, so he has a, a thing for you know kind of fading. Mm -hmm. But uh, once he found his, um, once he found his range and his. Uh, his timing, he was just beating the shit out of that guy. And then he got a fade in the last round. Yeah. And the guy came back. Okay. So, but he proved why he's Jose Aldo. Just, I mean, say round two, three, and four were classic. Yeah. The first round was kind of a feeling out round. And the other guy was getting in some good shots. And it was pretty close. But then Jose found his, <laughs> his range, his timing. And he just, he just, he was all over there. Those leg kicks were brutal. They're like whips. I mean, yeah, they and, were, and then the fifth round, he does what he usually does. I think a lot has to do with his weight cuts, because he's massive for a 45. Yeah. 
So that could that could be a reason. But I mean, he didn't. He didn't. I don't think he lost that like round. Me, a lot of people say that I'm massive for a forty five er. They're like, you know, <laughs> Court, you are huge for a forty five er. And I say, I, you know, what can yeah. you say? TRT, TRT uh, is PRP. Is, yeah, it's a little different. What is TRT? I don't know. Okay, my TRT is is top ramen therapy. And we have it very often at the pit compound. Yeah. Yeah. But, well, people say I look... Mine, mine is taco ramen therapy. So it's mixed. It's a new taco ramen. It's top ramen, but it's... So it's Asian and Mexican. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I think my top ramen therapy self because people actually say I look really good for 25 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And they think I look younger. They're like, yep. That's awkward. <laughs> but anyway, okay. Main event, Barrow versus Faber. It was quite a round. Faber started off strong, but as soon as for, uh, Barrow found that range, which he did about a quarter of the way into the round, maybe a minute and a half in, once he found his range and the power, and he saw he was going to hurt um, Uriah and start going after him like he did, I think the fight would would was done. I think I think once he found his range, I think that was it. I also wonder having that much pressure that close together, four fights, and then it's been your fifth fight in that close of secession, is really difficult to do. And the only experience I can come from is just fighting the four fights in the house, and yeah. then the fifth fight, you know, a month and a half later. That's the only thing I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that could be it. And he does fight, you know, is a frequent for, for an MMA fighter or for, you know, a top-level boxer even. But, I mean, a lot of boxers, kickboxers, MMA guys that aren't at that level, uh, I mean, fighting, that's... So you average, like, one fight every three months, right? So that's not like you're fighting every week. I mean, yeah. the three months, I mean, you know, that's... So I don't know. That could have been. That could have... Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. His last fight was... It was only two months ago, wasn't it? No. But it was the night that I fought. Right. Yeah. A month and month and change? Yeah. Okay. So that is pretty close. So that could have something to do with it. Do you think it was an early stoppage? That's the big controversy, which it is. A lot of people think no. Some people think yeah. Drew, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think it was an early stoppage? Uh early yeah. stoppage? I think, I think the stoppage was perfect. Um, it would have been nice if it went a little longer. I think Uriah might have uh, came around a little bit, um, but I think the fight was already sealed. That I mean, I think, I think Barrow already had his number, his he power. Looked, he, well, he looked like he was really hurt. He looked like he was really hurt. I'm not, I don't know where the cheetos are. Oh. Um, yeah, we thought he was hurt. And I think the rules still clearly state if you're covering up, there's not protecting yourself. And you have to improve your position if you're getting hammer blow. You can break like 20 bricks with a hammer blow. I've seen guys do it. You can break a block of ice with a hammer blow. I mean, just putting your hand there is not uh, a effective uh, defense. It is not yeah. intelligently defending yourself. This is not going to do it. A hammer blow is going to go right through that. Just like Munoz blocking Machida's kick. Okay? There's a fine line, line too. Because like if, if a ref lets it go a little bit too far, then he's scrutinized because he's not looking out for the best interest of the fighter. And if he stops it too soon, then the fighter he, he was definitely got wobbled on a couple different punches. And he was bellied out on that shot. Had his leg kind of build up a base, but he wasn't moving and all I'm sure he was saying improve, which he was blocking. He was blocking, but you don't know if you're really hurt or not. I guess. I, yeah, I like we're, like we're saying, if your if your hand is on this orange right here, and you're blocking, this is how he's blocking his face. I mean, you're gonna. I'm not gonna squish you with it, but, but I'll break that, that orange will explode. You know, see, so you, that's not blocking. You're still passing the force on to to your head. Just like but I said, if I was Uriah and I was in that position, I would have, I would have been mad too for them stopping it. Yeah, you probably yeah probably right. And the Pride crowd want to see a few more shots. Yeah. So how many shots? 
I mean, how? What do you wait for? The guy's out. Yeah. So I mean, I think Herb Dean had a tough call. I think he made the right call. Um, and like I said, he could have waited ten more shots until Uriah was severely hurt. Um, but I think he did the right thing and stopped it right. But I think Uriah is a great fighter and he'll be back. Um, and I just think you know it is what it is, and it was just a bad position. And he even admitted after the fight in the interview. I couldn't have gotten up. I couldn't have changed my... I couldn't improve my position. So I gave him a thumbs up with the other hand, which Herb Dean was on this side watching the, the punches land off his head. He wasn't looking at the thumb over here. The thumb. So anyway, thanks for coming to our blog. That's the recap of the UFC 169 here at Court McGee, Pitmaster, and I will see you guys later. Thanks. Adios.